Good morning. <clears throat> we are learning Parashat Korach. We are on page 821 of the Art Scroll Chumash. And uh, Parashat Korach continues the sad story that we read about last week in Parashat Shalach, where the Jewish people sent the spies right before coming into the land but the spies brought a bad report they slandered the land and they discouraged the Jewish people from um, going into the land of Israel and because of that the Jewish people cried they complained they accused Hashem of uh, not caring for them and wanting to kill them and Hashem decreed that if uh, you wish to die here in the desert I will grant your wish and um, he said I will be kind to you and I will wait until each one of you reaches the age of 60 at which point um, every man who was between 20 and 60 when they came out of Egypt died and now after the Jewish people hear of this decree that now they have to st st stay in the desert for the next 38 years they are very um, prone to being uh, convinced to rebel and that is what Korach does he uses the opportunity that people are dissatisfied with uh, Moshe's leadership and with the situation and uh, he forms a rebellion Chapter 16, page 821, Korach, son of Yitzhar, son of Kehat, son of Levi, separated himself. Korach was a Levite. Levi had three sons, Kehat, Gershon, and Mirari. And Kehat was the, the main son. From him came Moshe, Aharon, Miriam, Elazar, Hakohen, and Korach came from Kehat also. So Korach and Moshe were first cousins. So he separated himself. He separated himself from the general trend of following Moshe, and he said, Why do we need to follow Moshe? Let us make a different uh, a group and in fact he said why do we need a leader at all every Jew heard God speaking on on Mount Sinai every Jew received the Torah every Jew became a prophet and let us just uh, all be the uh, Kohanim let us all be the leaders as uh, when Ben Gurion once spoke with an American president American president told him uh, I'm greater than you because you are a, a, pr a, a prime minister over 2 million people and I am a president over 200 million people 100 times more and Ben Gurion answer, answered him, You are a president over 200 million people, and I am a prime minister over 2 million prime ministers. Because every Jew thinks that he is the prime minister himself. Every Jew has an opinion. Every Jew wants to change the world. And therefore, um, it's much harder to guide and lead the Jewish people. And so it was very difficult for Moshe. And Korach said, um, yeah, we don't need a leader. Each one of us is a leader. We all know the truth. We all heard God. We don't accept um, any boss over our head, only God. So he separated himself, but our sages say he did it with an ulterior motive. He was proclaiming to the masses that he is doing it for them, 
that they don't need a leader, let each man be the leader of his house. But in fact, he wanted to remove Moshe from leadership and he wanted to become a leader himself. And together with Datan and Aviram, sons of Eliav, and On, son of Pelet, children of Reuven, together with him were three more men. They were from the tribe of Reuven. Datan and Aviram, we have uh, met elsewhere. They were the two evil people, two Jews who always fought against each other, and they fought against are the Jews. They always did trouble for the Jewish people all the way from Egypt. Even in Egypt they were um, very um, argumentative. They fought and um, they went against Moshe. They uh, slandered him to, to Paro and because of them Paro decreed death on Moshe because Although Moshe was uh, protecting one of them when he was uh, being beaten by an Egyptian and Moshe killed the Egyptian, then when it was convenient for them, they went and they told Paro who did it. And they said, you know that Egyptian that attacked me? I know who killed him. And his own savior, he sent to death. Um... So they joined Korach and together with them was a man called, uh, whose name was On. And he was confused. He wasn't sure who to follow. So in the meantime, he followed them. But later we will see that he removed himself from their evil group. Thanks to his wife, his wife convinced him not to join them and he was saved. But later we will see that Korah and Datan and Aviram will die together with their entire family. Um, now, verse 2 on page 2821. They stood before Moshe with pride and uh, boldness with 250 men from the children of Israel. And they gathered 250 elders from all the tribes, but mainly from Ruven. And they were all leaders of the assembly, those summoned for meeting, men of renown. So here Korach assembled over 250 people, great people, not simple simpletons. And he is going against Moshe. They gathered together against Moshe and against Aharon. And they said to them, It is too much for you. They said, You, Moshe and Aharon, are two brothers. How is it that two brothers from the same family got two highest positions in the Jewish nation? Moshe became the king, the leader, and Aharon became the Kohen Gadol, the spiritual leader of the Jewish people. Is that a coincidence? Or, Moshe, maybe you appointed Aharon to be the Kohen Gadol of your own choice, because he was your brother. And that's why he says, it is too much for you. Why should both of you occupy two highest positions? For the entire assembly, all of them, are holy, and Hashem is among them. Why do you exalt yourselves over the congregation of Hashem? The entire assembly, all of them are holy, and Hashem is among them. Our sages say that any lie that does not have truth mixed in with it will not survive. And therefore, the greatest liars, what they do is... They mix a little bit of truth among great deal of lies. And people notice the truth and they say, okay, if this is true, maybe the rest is also true. And they believe them. And that's what Korach did as well. He said great things, great truths about the Jewish people. He said the entire assembly, all of them, 
are holy, and that's true. Jewish people are holy, all of them. And Hashem is among them. God is with us. But then he added a lie. Why do you exalt yourselves over the congregation of Hashem? And Moshe heard and fell on his face in prayer. He realized that it is very dangerous. If there will be another rebellion, Hashem might carry out his previous decree of wiping out the entire nation and starting the Jewish people again with Moshe as their forefather. And he said, Hashem, please let, not it, let it not happen. The Jews already sinned so many times in the last year. Another rebellion might destroy them. He spoke to Korah and to his entire assembly. So first he tried to make peace and reason with them. And he said, in the morning Hashem will make known the one who is his own and the Holy One. And he, God, will draw him close to himself. And whomever he will choose, he will draw close to himself. So Moshe is telling him, why should we fight? You say that I appointed myself and my brother. I tell you that I was just following God's command. Let's ask God. Let's wait until tomorrow morning. We will do an experiment, which he will describe. And whoever, whomever God chooses, that will be the sign for all the Jews to know for sure that he is the chosen one. So they mainly are testing Aharon. Because if Aharon is the true Kohen Gadol, then we know that Moshe acted with God's um, command. And then we know that Moshe is true also. So on page 823, verse 6, he told them this is the test that we're going to do tomorrow morning. Do this. Take for yourselves fire pans, Korach and his entire assembly, and put fire in them, put coals, and play, place incense, the ketorah, the spices, upon them before Hashem tomorrow. In the Mishkan, in front of um, the, the Mizbeach, the altar, so let's all serve God. And uh, we know from the past that when two people simultaneously bring offerings, Hashem favors one over the other. And we can see who is greater. That's what happened with Cain and Hevel. Cain and Hevel brought offerings and Hashem chose Hevel's offering and not Cain's. And we know that uh, Eliyahu, the prophet, made the same test with the false prophets of the idol Baal. And uh, they offered a cow and he offered a cow on two separate altars. And uh, they said, whoever God desires or whichever God is true, fire will come down from heaven and consume that offering. And uh, fire came down and consumed Eliyahu's offering. And all the people understood that Hashem is the true God. So Moshe said the same thing. Let all of you, Korach, the 250 men who are also vying to become Kohen Gadol, and Aharon, who is the real Kohen Gadol, let all of you come and uh, bring the same offering. Let's see whose offering will be accepted. The, then the man whom Hashem will choose, he is the Holy One. 
It is too much for you, O offspring of Levi. Moshe here spoke to the entire tribe of Levi, trying to persuade them not to follow Korah. And uh, he reminded them, it's too much for you, which means you already have greatness. You already were separated from the rest of the Jewish people to become servants of Hashem in the temple. And he was also reminding them that in service of Hashem, there is only one Kohen Gadol. And uh, he tried to tell them that out of 250 people, only one will survive. The rest are going to die. So you have a chance of 1 in 250 that you will survive and 249 or full 250 because Aaron is 251st you have a 250 out 251 chances of dying and only one chance of surviving would you take such a risk and nevertheless all of them took that risk verse 8 Moshe said to Korah here now O offspring of Levi is it not enough for you that God of Israel has segregated you from the assembly of Israel to draw you near to himself to perform the service of the tabernacle of Hashem and to stand before the assembly to minister to them. And he drew you near and all of your brothers, the offspring of Levi, with you. Yet you seek priesthood you're not satisfied with being a Levi, you also want to be a Kohen. Therefore, you and the entire assembly that are joining together are against Hashem. And as for Aaron, what is he that you protest against him? He didn't appoint himself. God chose him. So, leave him out of it. Verse 12. Now, Moshe is trying to reason with Datan and Aviram. Datan and Aviram, by the way, did not um, try to become Kohanim. I guess they were not interested in service of Hashem. They stayed at home. While these 250 people said, give us a chance to be a Kohen Gadol. So Moshe now goes to Datan and Aviram. <coughs> First he sends them a message. He, he sent forth to summon Datan and Aviram, the sons of Eliyahu, but they said, we shall not go up. They refused his message and they said, Is it not enough that you have brought us up from a land flowing with milk and honey? That's how they call Egypt, the land where their wife, the, the, one of their wives was abused. That was the story where an Egyptian man uh, tricked a Jewish woman and pretended to be her husband in the middle of the night and she didn't know and he slept with her and then when her husband found out um, he protested and the Egyptian beat him up and Moshe defended um, the Jew and um, killed the Egyptian so their wife one of their uh, Datan or Aviram I'm not sure which one. Um, his wife was was raped. He himself was uh, about to be killed by this Egyptian. They were in slavery. The Jewish people were being killed and tortured. And they call Egypt the land flowing with milk and honey. And you took us out with evil intent to cause us to die in the wilderness. They're accusing Hashem that He wants to kill them, even though He's sending them water from a rock and man, bread falling upon them from heaven with clouds of glory around them. And they're accusing Hashem of not loving them and uh, trying to hurt them. Yet, you seek to dominate us. You took, you took us out of good place and you brought us to bad place. 
and now you want to be a leader of us even to dom dominate further moreover you did not bring us to a land flowing with milk and honey you promised to bring us to the land of Israel and now you said we're gonna die in the desert nor give us a heritage of field and wine on and vineyard now we're on page 825 and they continue even if you would gouge out our eyes we shall not go up very boldly they spoke to Moshe this distressed Moshe greatly he realized that uh, not Korach not 250 men and not that Anaviram are listening and it might cause destruction of the entire Jewish people and he started praying to Hashem he said to Hashem do not turn to their gift offering said Hashem please tomorrow when they offer uh, ketoret in front of you please don't accept it perhaps the rebellion will stop there the Jewish people will see that Aaron is chosen and the rebellion will die down by itself and then Moshe is showing his righteousness I have not taken even a single donkey of theirs I as their king as their leader I have the right to confiscate their property or to charge them taxes to pay for my expenses because I am a public servant and yet I don't get a salary and even what I need for my own transportation I don't have a driver I don't have a car I have my own transportation nor have I wronged even one of them I did not hurt them with words I did not hurt them physically and I did not hurt them financially how can they not be happy with me Moshe said to Korah again you and your entire assembly be before Hashem tomorrow now verse 18 the next morning arrives so they took each man his fire pan and they placed fire on them and put incense on them and they stood at the entrance of the tent of meeting with Moshe and Aaron Korah gathered the entire assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting he made a whole big show let's see how we are going to prove Moshe wrong and all of a sudden the glory of Hashem appeared to the entire assembly Hashem spoke to Moshe and Aaron saying separate yourselves from amid this assembly and I shall destroy them in an instant and what Moshe was afraid of is happening Hashem says you Moshe and Aaron separate and I'm gonna destroy the entire Jewish people in an instant they Moshe and Aaron fell on their faces and said "O oh God God of the spirits of all flesh shall one man sin and you be angry with the entire assembly and Moshe is trying to uh, reason with Hashem and say Hashem the Jewish people don't know right from left Korach is falsely convincing them and they don't know who to believe please do not destroy the entire Jewish people just destroy the sinners so I would say just say that this sentence can be read as a question as we read it now but at the same time it can be read as a statement one man shall sin and you will be angry with the entire assembly that such a thing also happens that all the Jews are responsible one for another and if one Jew sins Hashem is angry with the entire Jewish people because since he allowed himself to behave like this to um, transgress it means that there was a spirit of rebellion in the nation if one Jew desecrates Shabbat it means 
that among the religious Jews there is a certain weakness in keeping Shabbat. Just like in an organism, in a body, if one cell is sick, it will affect the entire organism, it will infect and kill the entire organism, so too it is with the, with the Jews. One Jew sins and the entire Jewish people can be punished. And just like in the body, if the body is healthy, then each individual cell will be healthy. The fact that one cell became sick is a sign that the, the body, the entire body is weak. So Moshe is asking Hashem, please don't destroy the entire Jewish nation, only kill the sinners. And in verse 23, Hashem spoke to Moshe saying, Speak to the assembly saying, Get yourselves for up from all around the dwelling places of Korach, Datan, and Aviram. Hashem says, Okay, I accept your uh, advice and I will only destroy the families of Korach, Datan, and Aviram. Now, um, the Torah doesn't tell us what happened to the 250 people yet. It's going to tell us a little bit later that they were burnt alive. And they all died right that instant when they brought the Ketoret. Just like the two sons of Aharon, who also brought the Ketoret, who also wanted to serve God without permission, they were burnt their souls were burnt out of their bodies, so too these 250 people were burnt. Um, so, now Hashem tells, tells them, tell the Jewish people to leave the neighborhood where houses of Korach, Datan, and Aviram are. The rest of the Jewish, Jewish people will be spared. Verse 25, Moshe stood up and went to Datana and Aviram, trying to give them another chance to repent. And the elders of Israel followed him. He spoke to the assembly, saying, Turn away now from near the tents of these wicked men, and do not touch anything of theirs, lest you perish because of all their sins. So they got themselves up from near the dwelling of Korach, Datana and Aviram from all around, and Datan and Aviram went out erect at the entrance of their tents with their wives, children, and infants. Again, they stood up and they did not think of repenting. They were still rebellious in the face of Gehinam. As our sages say, that someone who is evil through and through even at the entrance way to Gehinam to hell even though he sees it coming he still does not repent now page 827 verse 28 now Moshe says to himself if they just drop dead people might question maybe it was just a coincidence maybe there was poison in their food maybe they were um, agents snipers that shot them so Moshe said through this shall you know that Hashem sent me to perform all these acts that it was not from my heart and he said let us ask Hashem to perform an open miracle to show that their death is not accidental. If these people die like the death of all men, and the destiny of all men is visited upon them, then it is not Hashem who has sent me. The doubt will still remain in people's hearts. 
But if Hashem will create a phenomenon and the earth opens its 